Hey, welcome back to the Corporate Cowboys podcast. It's been a minute. Did you miss me since uh, we we ended the audiobook series? But we're back. And this series that I'm starting now, if you're watching, is on video, is on YouTube. And I will try to get through it in as, as not as fast as possible, but as concisely and as punctual as possible. I will be treating these video series, this video... This video series, because it's going to be ongoing, I'll be treating this series as if they were professional consultations, okay? Now, in order to do this, and in a timely fashion, I'm going to time myself in order to complete uh, this consultation within a 30-minute window. If it were with a paying client, it would be an hour minimum, and we would take it from there, right? If y'all want rates... If y'all want uh, that information on how to engage me as a consultant, as an advisor, by all means, if you need legal, you need professional, you need career, academic help, reach out and, I mean, shit, we can work together. We can work something out. Otherwise, enjoy this free content as we explore Reddit. Yes, Reddit. Not the most beautiful sample population just because of the sheer amount of shit that's on it. But some of the contributions uh, have some merit. I've got to stop saying, uh, and I've got to stop saying, um, because at the end of the day, this is a, uh, not a self-help, but a professional help podcast. So it's as much therapy for me as I hope it is help for you. So let's begin. Under career guidance, the subreddit, r slash career guidance just want to hit hot what what's the hottest the hottest posts right now let me see them this one was posted three hours ago by the user of i don't give a fuck right because this advice is free they want to come at me they can find me i guess if uh, (laughs) if they can but i'm not gonna go into all that um (laughs) they could find this video if they really want and it's asking for advice by way of, is there an optimal way to explain long-term underemployment or unemployment? So just off top, they want to contextualize some kind of uh, experiential gap in their resume. Say they apply for a job, right? And it's asking for your CV, Uh, upload your CV. And then for whatever reason, a lot of these fucking organizations have a uh, place to both insert your resume and then they just on the next page be like, okay, now you got to fill in all the blanks on your fucking resume as if you didn't just upload the bitch, right? By the way, upload it on PDF. Always upload it as a PDF because if you upload it as a word, uh, formatting can be an issue. It can come across as fucked up. But PDF, it's easy. You could, they could download it, they could print it, have it on hand, they could read it themselves. But again, that's going to be... That's going to be when you first enter the game, you want to find what, what what kind of team you're playing with, like who you're actually applying for and and what the terms are to sign on the dotted line, if that makes any sense. So if they take things really personal, then they probably want that CV, that resume sent directly to them and they'll give you an email address and it's going to be their name followed by their company handle and they're going to review that bitch and they're going to hand it off to their supervisors and then they're going to reach out and be like, hey, yo, we like how the shit looks. We want you to come in for an interview. All right, then. And then it might be, uh, it might be the immediate person who you handed off the resume to or it might be the two supervisors ahead of them right? If there is a chain of command, depending on how large the organization is. I'm ranting. Coming back, it says, is there an optimal way to explain long-term underemployment or unemployment? And it's asking, hey, so the past year has been tough for me. Graduated university during COVID and I have an interview coming up. My go-to line is, I haven't found a position that is a good fit for my skills and passions in a company whose values align with mine and my career goals. But I think that there is always a better way to go about things. How would you recommend that I explain the unemployment slash underemployment gap post-grad? Is there anything I can do to minimize the damage? 
I worked odd jobs and did some projects slash certifications. So, all right, so this person sounds older, right? Notice how they didn't leave their age. They didn't leave their actual, I mean, I, I suppose you don't want to just shoot your resume out on Reddit, right? But they could at least give them their age and uh, perhaps the region that they are in the country or the industry that they're, that they're looking to get into. I worked odd jobs and did some projects slash certifications. Typically, I struggle to get my foot in the door, but excel once I'm in. Thank you. Okay, so at the very end, uh, you, one could say, I guess, it's like the, the call, the call, what, what the call subject was about, the subject of the call was their struggle to get the foot in the door and supposedly not needing help once they're in right? Now, if they're younger, I feel like that long-term underemployment, I think that might be an exaggeration if they're younger, but this person is saying that they have worked odd jobs and did some projects and certifications. What that tells me is that they have experience, is that they are experienced, they're older, and in doing so, now that they've graduated university, I mean, shit, like they just graduated university, how long how long term underemployment are we talking you could always contextualize being underemployed by going to university at the same time because university requires time and energy and money right so if you're doing part time of both I, I i feel like that isn't necessarily underemployment that's you that that's you taking advantage that's you maximizing the opportunities available to you at that point in time, right? So just because you aren't working full time doesn't mean you aren't working. Doesn't mean you're under. It doesn't mean you're underemployed. It just means that you have that you are actually balancing multiple facets of life by going to school and working at the same time. I get that's not a surprise to many, right? But again, we're not giving any any additional circumstantial information here. We're not told how old this person is. We're not told what industry this person is in. We're not told what their goals or their values actually are, right? So it, it's just, it, it, we don't know what their skill set is. We don't even know what their actual passions are. They're trying to find a way to, to, to come up with a, a blanket, a blanket waiver, not a waiver, but a, a blanket exception that they could just have as a, as a form of like a business card to shoot at recruiters and tell them, hey, I was underemployed or, under, or, or unemployed because I was doing something else, some other beneficial task in life that didn't necessitate me working full time, right? But uh, I, I feel like a lot of these, these Redditors and I, I want to say it's because it goes back to them being younger or them having been fresh out of school, them being students. Maybe they don't know how to contextualize their ask, right? They don't know how to contextualize their, their call, so they don't know what type of information to come to a consultation. But within the first 10 or 15 minutes, I would cap it at 15 minutes if I'm on a call with a client, me taking this approach. I'm on a call with a client. I'm asking them these questions. I'm, I'm asking them what their age is, where, what region of the country they're in or what region of the world they're in, their industry, those projects and certifications that they're talking about. Well, what the fuck are those? What, uh, what skills and passions uh, in, in, do they seek in companies? And then their personal values and their career goals, right? Because if you want to create leaders, if I want to create a corporate cowboy that I can work alongside, then I've got to know these things. Otherwise, yeah, this motherfucker's underemployed. Yeah, this motherfucker's been unemployed. He's, he's just been slacking off. And, and see, I'm gendering them now, right? But I could have said, yeah, this bitch is underemployed and they ain't doing shit, but hopping on Tinder every weekend and, and not putting in work. And now they want to, now they want to justify their absence with, professional jargon that that shit doesn't fly in corporate a lot of yes there are a lot of inept motherfuckers in corporate and a lot of incompetency happens in corporate right but there are some smart motherfuckers right if there aren't 
if if they aren't dumb, right? They're gonna know and they're they're gonna see through your sorry excuse. Your sorry excuse for a justification. Especially when you just walked out of the university and, and your mind is is fresh off of the fucking fresh off of the boat. Literally fresh off of the boat because we're talking about universities that that serve to uh, to indoctrinate and inculcate you with certain values. So even those even those values and, and those and those passions, right? Maybe not the skill sets, but those values and passions that you walk out of the university with might not even be your own. They might have been implanted. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. But what is of importance is those skills and your career goals where they fit in your in in within your um w- within your objective livelihood if that makes sense w- where those skills and your career goal fit within your objective livelihood what you want to attain from those skills in in conjunction with your goals because a, a lot of passions and a lot of values Yes, they might be deemed sacrificial, but at the same time, those passions and values might be misinformed. They may be misinformed. So, I mean, back to the back to the matter at hand. It's asking here how to explain the long term underemployment and unemployment. I think they did it just fine. Uh, if me personally, if if they just jumped out of school right and and they're younger. They, they don't have a lot, a lot to offer anyways. I mean, they haven't, unless their CV is, their resume is fucking immaculate and like the projects and these certifications are fucking diamonds in the rough. And interviewers, competent interviewers in the corporate have been trained to identify diamonds in the rough, to be able to take a diamond and insert that bitch that is the grinding stone of corporate and grind them and polish and hone that motherfucker into a precious gem, right? That's what that, I mean, and, and I'm talking about an interviewer. An interviewer ought to serve as a guidance counselor for what is corporate, right? But me, just personally, I just, you know, just your everyday guy, your, your free, your friendly neighborhood corporate cap, your friendly <laughs> corporate cowboy, your friendly neighborhood guidance counselor. I do this shit for free. I'm telling you, you want to put things on the resume that have you come off as a diamond in the rough. Because if all you've got to say is that, uh, you know, I just haven't found a position that has a good fit for my skills and passions in a company whose values align with mine and my career goals. That's too general. It sounds like any other mother, like any any other person who's been through like 20, I don't know, not uh, that's too many, right? Like, But like five plus relationships back to back, right? They just... They just hook up with somebody and then dump them like back to back, and and they're just blowing through relationships and and but but the common denominator is them and them saying like oh I just haven't found somebody who aligns, but they aren't willing to uh, they aren't willing to like avidly either work with either work with the materials they got or work on themselves and produce better material to be better material and attract better material right if. If there is little to none of that work taking place, you're going to take this little sorry ass excuse of not finding a position that fits their skills and passions and whose values align with theirs and their career goals. They're going to take that sorry excuse to the fucking grave. (laughs) All right, let's look at the comments. Let's look at the comments real quick. Somebody says, maybe say that whilst, whilst you've been looking for the right opportunity during a volatile economic climate, you've been keeping yourself busy with doing projects and odd jobs, building on your skills to keep yourself sharp. COVID has generally made it acceptable for longer periods of unemployment. There shouldn't be a hard push on this. Any empathetic human should understand. Although, be prepared to outline what type of opportunity you are wanting because that's what you're setting yourself up for with a follow-up, a follow-up question. It says your follow-on, but with a follow-up question based on that positioning. And yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the, the OP says, yeah, that makes sense. Why? Because if they say that, then a competent interviewer is just going to follow up and be like, okay, well, what type of opportunity, what type... 
what type of uh, it says here, what type of, of values, what type of corporate values do align with you? Because at that point, you if you treat yourself as coming from a position of weakness, and I, I think this first comment did a great job of addressing that, to not bring yourself, to not outline your position as a position of weakness, right? You want to always assert a position of 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 equity a, a, a position of of yeah of of equal of equality like you want to assert the position being an as being equal to the corporation i mean equality isn't legislated if, if that i don't know if you've ever heard of that equality is not legislated equality is is uh <laughs> that's the term i'm looking for uh how they say it equality is not legislated Equality. It's not like one, and it's not legislated. Equality is 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 it earned? I mean, one could one could say that if we're going to if we're going to equate equality with equity, equity is earned, right? Equity is is earned, and that could be by what you bring to the table, and that could make you equals. I mean, we are talking about making a corporation, an entire corporation, an equal of just one individual, one person. And that in itself is a task. It is a challenge, but it can be done. Now, this first comment does a great job of mitigating coming to the corporation, coming to the organization from a perceived position of weakness, saying that, oh, I'm unemployed, I've been unemployed, and I haven't been doing shit. How about you frame that and you contextualize you having done those projects and odd jobs as a way of keeping your skills up, of staying abreast with whatever industry, whatever market it is that you are seeking to enter, right? And and this information could have been given to us by the original poster, and the, but this first commenter does a great job of saying, well, like, based off of the information that you are giving, right? Uh, it, I mean, it may or may not require some backdating because I doubt, here, let's go back up. I doubt that they worked these odd jobs and did certification during university, right? They may have done these odd jobs and certifications uh, before it, but it is possible that if they had gone part-time, that they're able to do these projects part-time and obtain the certifications, which again, goes back to my original point. You're not underemployed. You're not unemployed if you are doing both part-time. If that's all you can manage and you are managing them to a T, you're managing them with fucking gusto, right? Then go out and demand to be paid what you are worth now that you've graduated and now that you can devote yourself to the fucking business. Now that you can devote yourself to the profession, get paid like a professional, demand that shit. I mean, negotiate, negotiate that shit. Be diplomatic, be nice, be nice about it. The second here says, your first paragraph is better than the second. The second sounds like you'd be a project who maybe won't work hard if the passion isn't there. <laughs> oh shit. The first is more truthful and understandable. Build from there. Here, it says here, the second, the second paragraph is this, ba ba ba. I don't, I don't get it. The, the first paragraph says this, right? That they've just graduated. Okay, cool. The second paragraph says this. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. The, the second paragraph sounds like you'd be a project who maybe won't work hard if the passion isn't there. Yeah, that makes sense. Why? Because a lot of folks in corporate, a lot of folks in corporate will see right through this shit. Where if the job isn't perfect, I mean, if, if the passion was there and the cultural values, the, the corporate organizational cultural values, if the corporate culture was perfect for the interviewee, the interviewee would be grinning from ear to ear, would pretty much bow down and, and, and become a, be a volunteer intern in, in hopes of a paid position. Why? Because all the passion is there, right? But at the same time, as soon as somebody says like, oh, like a as, as soon as an interviewee says that the passions in a company, that it wasn't a good fit for my skills and passions in a company whose values align, 
It's like saying, if if the values don't align, then don't expect good work, right? But if you're a professional, you're gonna get, you're gonna arrive to the job, you're going to perform on the contract, and you're gonna be done, right? You're gonna get in, collect the bag, and bounce. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it just has to do with with uh, trying to trying to cover too much ground with not a lot of assets, if that makes sense. Just, just trying to spread yourself too thin with something you can't back up just yet. I mean, this person might not even be known, right? Especially if they just graduated university and are, and are interviewing. If they, weren't, if they were not personally approached by like a headhunter, they're a fucking nobody, right? Like they, they don't necessarily, they aren't necessarily known. They don't have a history in this industry that they're going into. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in their age, the region, and the industry. That, to me, has a lot to say, uh, says a lot about a person, especially with uh, approaches and, and angles they could pursue in, in justifying long-term underemployment. I don't know. That, that just baffles me. It baffles me if, if they're going to school at the same time and have worked. But if they were doing... Or if they were doing one or the other. I mean, if they went to school full time and uh, I don't know, what if it was full ride? What if it was full ride? They got tuition and board, like room and board, and they didn't have to pay for shit. They're just at school. What the fuck? Like, who gives a shit if you're unemployed? Like, you're, you're, you're out there obta- getting that degree, getting that paper. If it's in liberal arts, you know, thoughts and prayers. But, if you know, if it's something utilizable, if it's something marketable, then you're out there getting, you know, earning your stripes. You don't have to answer to nobody about being underemployed or or, under, or unemployed. If they bring, okay, if they should bring that up in interview, right? Say they bring that up in interview, and and their go-to line is this. Nah, that's that's where they fuck up. You see, that's where they fuck up. And and now I'm beginning to understand because of just how the way the question is written. If their go-to line when they are asked about this is that bro minimizing the damage you don't want to minimize the damage you you want to maximize you want to maximize your your benefit you want to maximize the potential upside of you no longer being quote unquote underemployed or unemployed right so definitely justifying your underemployment and unemployment with uh, obtaining skills, with getting degrees and, and, and sharpening and honing your shit while you're out of the field, but staying on top of the field. So, so say you're, 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 and again, it depends on what industry you're in, but if you're staying on top of news and events and, and keeping current with the happenings in your field, you're a fucking asset. It's like you never left the field. It's it, it it the recruiter the interviewer should feel as if should feel as if they are poaching you from somebody else should want to snag you up and you you ought to present yourself as that diamond in the rough that goes back to man it's like I'm talking in circles and I I, I fucking love doing that because I get back to the beginning of what I said where those projects those projects and certifications you want to highlight as having been attained for the purpose of marketability. If you can't justify, if for, for whatever reason you cannot justify uh, just solely going to school or solely working, right? Or doing both part-time, if for whatever reason you can't justify, you should stumble across. And if you need, if you need somebody to like personally coach you through it, hit me up, right? Because that's a that's another rate. That's a different rate. But if if you can't justify your activities, that's a personal thing. That's a personal thing. Maybe you aren't doing enough, right? And, and that, that, that justification, that whether or not that settles with you, whether or not that unsettles you, right? That's your personal prerogative. You've got to live, you've got to be able to be satisfied with what you can and cannot produce, Right? That's, that's, those are the facts of life. So say you want to justify underemployment by having gone to school part-time and, I don't know, 
watching cartoons, the the watching porn and cartoons and smoking weed like the other part time, right? And but but say you are smart, say you are smart, bro, you're gonna fucking stumble. You're gonna fucking stumble, even if you do go to school part time. And I mean, I haven't seen a full ride for a part time uh, for part time education, but you could be a smart motherfucker. But if what you do is not just, is not I guess righteous in a sense, you're gonna fucking stumble. And some folks will see through that. Maybe, maybe you do get the job. Maybe you do stumble into the door. Stumbling through the door. But uh whether or not it lasts, I mean that might be uh predicated on that that, that might be indicative of your work product. I mean, of your passion, because it says a lot about what you have been able to accomplish in the time that you have. And then if you get to work and now have to be paid for it and your product just isn't there, it's not showing through, the presentation is off, the professionalism is off, I just cut you out right there. Uh, And then somebody else says, to make sure I understand, are you considering long-term unemployment to include the time between graduation and landing your first job after graduation? If so, you really don't have to explain that As anything beyond what you just said, I graduated during peak COVID, and so it has been hard to find a job. If so, you really don't have to explain that as anything beyond what you just said. I graduated during peak COVID, and so it has been hard to find work. You don't have to feel apologetic or otherwise concerned. You graduated at a bad economic time. That's not anything you need to explain or be expected to explain beyond that statement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this comment was just asking for additional context. And yeah, that, that's something you want to, that's something the OP could have included at the very top, at the very beginning, was, um, was uh, what period in time were they quote unquote underemployed or unemployed? If it was if it was before school, that's questionable, right? I mean, it's uh, a recruiter might ask, so what caused you to leave, you know, work, and then have this long expanse time of no activity, and then and then going to school, right? But even then, you could justify it with the fact that you were prospecting going to school. I mean, it, it, it's all dependent. It is context dependent it's fact dependent on how long on how long you were unemployed how long you were uh, underemployed and um and what the outcome of that was me personally i think anytime you take it upon yourself anytime a person takes it upon themselves to return to school and better their position right to get some kind of degree, some kind of education, some kind of education. And you don't even have to go to a four-year institution. It could be an online, it could be a certification like the OP is saying. If in that time, if in that time that they stopped working and then went to school, if in that time they were quote unquote unemployed, they were working little side projects and getting certifications, that that's invaluable experience. That's, that's, and I mean invaluable and you cannot put a price on that. That's, immensely valuable experience. Why? Because it it puts you in a category of, of, of an initiator, of you going out, taking the initiative of being a self-starter, being a self-starter and having the drive to push yourself to go out and attain those certifications and improve your lot in life by becoming a professional. It's, it's you affirmatively choosing to be a professional, whether or not you got it from a school, right? But if you went to a school, I feel like school is is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a good excuse. It's kind of like a good shield to throw up in an interview, especially if you've been out of the workplace. I, I feel like that would be like, oh, I was in school. I was, you know, fucking going to school and getting my degree. If if your degree was a piece of shit, I mean, don't expect it to hold up too long. I mean. Corporate, corporate, <laughs> corporate recruiters got armor piercing. You feel me? Um, 
Let's see, how long have I done this one for? Dang, exactly 30 minutes. Exactly 30 minutes, folks. And this is the first of many. Now, this is the first of many, so you can expect more in the future. Uh, if you like the content, I feel like, because uh, I, I didn't even read it, and I feel like the comments, the comments uh, were pretty spot on. I had to read three. Uh, I think I had to read three to, to get to what I originally wanted to know, which was, you know, what their position was and what what type of underemployment or unemployment they were trying to justify. And uh, well, we didn't get that. And that might be because it's, oh, they just changed right now. It might be because it's four hours old. But um, at the same time, I feel like just reading the question and highlighting those those really necessary details, maybe, maybe one day, if this video should blow up and, and Redditors see this on Career Guidance or any other number of professional subreddits, if they see this, they will they will come to this forum and treat it in a manner where they can put in the uh, they can put in those necessary factuals, those those necessary facts, and get even better advice, get even better counseling, and and that that's something that is done on a very personal level where you can get it from just one person. Reddit, in that sense, is very, very good if you know how to use the platform and, and really tailor your question to get the optimal, the, the optimal number, right? And that's why they're asking for it in this manner. They want the optimal way because they're expecting multiple responses. They're expecting multiple responses. And you can get an optimal response from one person but, I mean, you'd have to fucking pay, right? Like, if you go into a professional to learn, to if, if you go into a professional to seek professional advice, to seek career advice, if you're going to a career professional to seek career advice, expect to pay, right? Because that's going to be the optimal way. But, I mean, again, these folks, these folks in the comments are just working with information that they're given. And they bring up good points. They bring up good points, I mean... Me personally, I got, I got my methodology for approaching this and and working through it with a client. But um, it it really it really goes to show that it, it may not it, it may not be that they are actually underemployed or unemployed at all. They've just got to to better to better organize their resume in a way that highlights their actual strengths, their actual strengths, right? And these would be actual strengths, having worked odd jobs, doing projects, and obtaining certifications. They've got to find a way to accent, to, to highlight those actual strengths versus this perceived fucking weakness right here. It's, it's perceived. It's a perceived weakness. It's been a tough year because they graduated peak COVID, that, that makes no sense how that would be a weakness. But again, it could be a personal issue and a career counselor, a guidance counselor could walk you through this in order to reframe to reframe how you perceive your situation. And because it, again, this might not even be a weakness at all. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you like this content, by all means, you can subscribe to our Patreon. It's the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. It will be... Uh, I mean, th this this will be the direction that I want to take it in. Uh, I feel like if you want to catch up on the older episodes and the other seasons, by all means. I mean, it's the 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 older episodes are maybe more advice, but like more shotgun advice, if that makes any sense. Where they might have been the the source material would be from from conversations that I have with previous clients, with previous associates. Um, and, and, and or thoughts that I would like to run through in a, in a form of thought experiment and, and audiobooks, right? Those are all in the past seasons, even, even this one, right? Because I, I cut this one halfway through season five. Now we're doing uh, guidance counseling, a form of guidance counseling, right? It's very, it's very, uh, it's free form, very free form. I'm necessarily freestyling. It's not scripted. And in that sense, I appreciate the the material that reddit has to offer because sometimes you see some of the fucking wildest zaniest questions like uh should i should i take this job that 
I'm fucking obviously pays higher and gives better benefits or should I take this other job that's going to ask me to to drive 3 miles to come into no 3 uh, 3 hours to come into work but but the opportunities right like and they really idealize uh, they, they really pedestalize and put the put the opportunity on a pedestal to like move up. Uh, and there's career advancement. I mean, it, it, so sometimes they're really obvious and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they require some a little walkthrough, a little walkthrough, and that's all. That's all I'm here for, and to do it in a cathartic manner because sometimes these questions, um, sometimes the, the, these questions will will evoke some emotion because. I myself or an associate of mine or a former client of mine might have found themselves in in a position like this and uh, and and I, I, I feel like a lot of I feel like a lot of us in our lifetimes have been in a position like this before where we don't have something I mean we have been working but maybe not necessarily something we can put on a resume for the specific job that we're applying for and yet still we ought to list that we have been productive in that time, that we have been actively developing our professional skill set in that time, even if it's not a, a, an occupation, a position that's directly related with the industry that we want to enter, with, with, the, with the corporation that we want to sign into, right? Well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to donate, by all means, do that. Again, this was a 30-minute consultation free from Yours truly, Alex, a corporate cowboy. You can donate. There's a PayPal. There's a Cash App. There's a Venmo. There's a Patreon. Subscribe. Get exclusive content. All of that. Like, comment, share, all that BS, man. You know what to do. You'll see me around.